Hi, I'm Rent, and today I'm going to walk you through one of the most important, most valuable, most strategic, and most efficient ways you can do testing. The strategy I'm going to teach you today has helped me get massive lifts across all industries and all sites that I've tested with. This strategy is called existence testing. If you were to only ever do one test, and that's all you could run, this would be the type of testing you would go to over and over again if you want to get the most value with your testing. Existence testing is so powerful because it has so many benefits. There's at least five benefits of running existence testing. The first one is that it's very efficient to do. It's super easy and it doesn't take a lot of resources on some of them. The second thing is that existence testing functions kind of like a multivariate test, but it's an A-B test in the fact that you can learn the value of your elements and you can learn the relative value of those elements to each other with an existence test. It also has many advantages over a multivariate test that you can run an existence test on elements that are drastically different, that are on different places on the page, whereas a multivariate test, sometimes you're limited with the location of the, of the page or you're limited with the elements you can test in a strategic way with a multivariate test. Another benefit of doing existence testing is once you know the value of an element and the relative value of that element to everything else on the page or site, you can now prioritize your test more efficiently so that you can get better value with each test you run because you know that value and you can prioritize accordingly. Finally, one of the most important benefits I've found of existence testing is that it allows people to push the boundaries of creativity. It really challenges their thinking in a good way. So what is existence testing? It's actually very simple. It's simply adding or removing elements from your site. Now you might say this is obvious, right? We, we do this all the time. We add things and remove things. But when you frame an existence test as the strategy of adding things or the strategy of removing things, it really challenges the way that you look at the site and it's very strategic in its approach. The things that we're adding or removing with an existence test are the elements of the site. And the elements could be large things like a page. You could say that whenever you do a landing page test, you're essentially doing an existence test on an entire page. Um, you also have smaller elements of the site. So for example, you might have a hero banner and by removing the hero banner, you see the value of that element. If you remove your hero banner and your lift goes up, you know that hero banner was negatively impacting your site experience. If you remove the hero banner and your lift goes down, you now have learned that that hero banner is a good thing and is helping the visitors convert or go through the funnel or whatever you want them to do. So existence testing is powerful because it gives you a clear read on elements. Again, that's one of the benefits of doing multivariate testing is you learn the relative value of the elements that you're testing. The, you get that same benefit from existence testing, but you can do bigger, bolder changes with an existence test. And so you actually have more flexibility in strategically doing existence testing. Again, to understand how it helps you learn the comparative value of elements, if you have two different widgets on your page and you remove one and your lift goes up by 10%, you know that was a bad widget. And then if you remove another widget and your lift goes up by 30%, you know that was a worse widget because you have a 10% increase and then a 30% increase. So you get the comparative value of different elements, which leads you to be able to better prioritize your follow-up tests. You say that, wow, this widget was really bad. What is it about that's bad? Or, hey, this widget was um, not as bad and we still might want that for certain reasons. You can also do the same thing when your existence shows a, a, a valuable element is on the page. So if your lift goes down by 5% and then you have another one that goes down by 10%, you know which one's the best, the one that went down by 10%. So the relative value becomes very important as you're trying to prioritize tests, prioritize what elements to put in front of the visitor first, and prioritize how you organize your pages and your site. I wanna show you a quick example of what this looks like in practice. We just ran an existence test on a site that has, a, like a, it's called the media library, where there's lots of media. There's photos, there's images, there's all kinds of things that people come and search for. And the client came to us and they said, we wanna know what's more important to the visitor. Is it browse or is it search? And so, hey, you want to know the importance of elements? Great. We will run an existence test on that page to find that out. So as you look at these, you can see that the control has both a browse and a search experience. On variation one, we have removed the search from the page. On variation two, we remove the browse, but we keep the search. And on variation three, we have removed the browse, but we've also removed the bottom right browse so the so that our client can understand that as well. Now, this is a great test because the client had a lot of assumptions about what was important to the visitor. 
And the results are so interesting because you come back and you see exactly what matters to the visitor in helping them find the content they're looking for. So you can see here the variations one and two had almost no impact on the visitor experience. By removing browse and removing search, the visitor was just fine. They found what they needed without a problem. So those elements aren't as important by themselves. You also see that in version three, there was a negative 7% decrease in, in, the, in the goal that we were measuring against in helping people find content. And so you know that that bottom right browse was the most important element in helping people find more content. It was more important than the browse and it was more important than the search. And so by writing this existence test, we now know that, hey, browse is somewhat important and search maybe is important, but the most important thing we should optimize and focus our attention on is that bottom right browse experience. Existence testing can be done in a variety of locations. It can be done with an entire page. That's what's called landing page testing. If it's the first page of the visit, you could, we've also done existence testing where we've removed a page that's in the flow or the funnel. And by removing that page, we're testing the existence of that page. You can also do existence testing with site-wide elements, like a global navigation. You can remove parts of the navigation or remove certain global or footer elements. You can also do existence testing on single page elements. So we talked about the hero banner. You could remove the hero banner to learn the value of that banner. You could also do existence testing on elements inside elements. So suppose you have a hero banner and in the hero banner you have a hero, uh, image, you have a call to action, you have some text, you have some icons. You can say, what if we remove each one of those things to see how it impacts the visitor? You remove the text and see how the text helps the visitor or not. You remove the image, the, the, the icons, all these things are things that can be removed to be able to understand if they're positively or negatively impacting the visitor experience. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've seen the value of doing strategic testing by doing existence testing, by adding and removing elements of the site. Again, it's efficient because you can remove things that are already there very easily. It's also strategic because you can learn the relative value of elements and the value of individual elements by themselves. So you now know how to prioritize and compare elements against themselves. If you liked what you've seen today, please hit the like button. Please also subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Thursday. And also feel free to visit me at testingtheory.com where I have more case studies and training material that will increase your testing output and give you better tests with each test you run.